Hi, this is Greg with Driving Line, and today we're gonna to be talking about batteries. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the most common style of battery and the one that you're gonna have the most issues with maintenance, which is the flooded style. Uh, first, we're gonna show you how to clean off the battery, clean up the terminals so you'll get the, the best charge and hopefully eliminate any kind of charging issues that you're having with your vehicle right now. Then we're gonna look at restoring an AGM battery, uh, how to charge it properly, and then finally, a deep cycle AGM battery. This one's already in a Mustang, it's showing a low charge, and we're gonna bring that battery back to life to see if we can get that Mustang started. First, we're gonna talk about flooded batteries. They're the most common type of battery out there. You're gonna see them in most applications. They're widely available, and they're relatively affordable compared to other types of batteries. Because flooded batteries are not sealed, they tend to leak battery acid all over the engine compartment, and they'll vent poisonous gases, uh, which are not healthy for you or your vehicle. Because flooded batteries require maintenance, if they're not maintained, they will corrode and fail. That's not true with AGM batteries. Absorbed glass matte batteries, or AGM batteries, are completely different than flooded batteries. They still provide the same type of charge, but they do it in a much more convenient way. They're maintenance free. There's no spills to worry about. There's no vapors to worry about. There's no corrosion to worry about. You put it in your vehicle and you don't have to worry about it anymore. AGM batteries can do everything the other types of batteries can do, only they can do it better. They're highly impact resistant and vibration resistant, and they can be mounted in any type of orientation or place on your vehicle. With AGM batteries, you don't have to worry about making sure that it's sitting upright in a safe position. You can do a lot more things with this, and this is the type of battery that's preferred by lots of off-roaders, racers of all types that are dealing with high impact, high speeds, high stopping. For instance, Ultra 4 racing, which is some of the hardest off-road racing in the world, or Formula Drift, where the cars are shifting from left to right at 80 to 90 miles an hour. And it's great for the everyday user as well because you can go do all those things too, uh, but you know that you don't have to worry about getting battery acid all over your metal parts. Plus, you'll have the peace of mind knowing that it's one of the safest batteries that you can possibly use. So where do AGM batteries come from? Originally, they were developed for military aircraft in the 80s, where power, safety, weight, and reliability were important, which is why it makes it such a great battery for enthusiast applications. So why should you use an AGM battery? Well, they may be a little bit more expensive, but above all, they're safer than the other batteries. They're shock and vibration resistant. They can be mounted in a, a variety of configurations and places on a vehicle that a flooded battery couldn't. Plus, they're highly resistant to freezing temperatures, and they don't vent into the atmosphere so they can be used in enclosed spaces. They also tend to last considerably longer than flooded type batteries. How much longer? Generally two to three times, which pays for that investment right off the bat. While an AGM battery doesn't require maintenance in the way that a flooded battery does, every once in a while it will need to be charged, topped off, so to speak. There's a variety of different chargers that can do that, uh, including Optima's new charger. We'll show you how to properly recharge and restore an AGM battery using the Digital 1200, their new charger that's ideal for any type of battery, whether it's flooded or AGM. Plus, it works for all types of 12 volt applications, including autos, trucks, tractors, and all types of marine applications. Basically, anything with a 12 volt battery, this thing can help. So what separates this charger from other chargers is that it's completely computer controlled, meaning that it knows when to shut down. If it's already got the battery charged, it'll automatically shut off, keeping it extremely safe. It's fully automatic. There's multi-stage charging, conditioning, maintaining, and reconditioning modes. It recovers deeply discharged batteries, and its quick set single touch operation is highly convenient. Plus, it's got USB ports, so you can charge your phone while you're charging your battery. Once you know what you're gonna be charging, it's really easy to set it up too. All you have to do is press one button and then basically walk away. Next, we're gonna recharge a flooded battery inside of a vehicle. The steps are fairly simple, but there is a lot more cleaning involved and you need to be conscious of any kind of battery acid or corrosion that may have developed on the battery. So the first thing you wanna do is remove the negative cable. There is a lot of corrosion here on this particular terminal and cable, so we just need to be careful to not disturb much of the corrosion because this is the stuff that's poisonous and these are the things that can harm your engine and metal parts. As you can see, it started to come loose. So just be gentle when you're removing the, or loosening up the nut on the clamp for the terminal. And once it's loose, again, gently work it off. And here you can see the corrosion that's developing on the terminal, which could 
create some kind of resistance which could prevent your battery from charging. Then remove the positive cable as well. It's always better to use some type of wrench, whether open end or box, because using the other type could strip the little bolt. Oh, and look at that. Why there wasn't a parent on the outside, there's corrosion on this side of the terminal as well. So you wanna grab all those little white pieces, everything that's like blue looking, anything that's powderish, because that's all potentially corrosive material. I'm using a wet paper towel here to kind of trap some of those particles. I'm not blowing it off into the engine because there's a lot of metal parts here. Not to mention, I don't want to breathe this stuff. It doesn't have to be spotless. You just want to make sure that you're not breathing or spreading any of those particles around. I always keep a little bit of baking soda around the garage because it comes in handy for a variety of different purposes. So first thing is just take your baking soda and use a liberal amount. Uh, this is a good portion that I got left in here. Pour it into your cup. Then once you have the baking soda in the cup, then just add water and mix up your solution so all that baking soda dissolves into the water. After you've mixed your solution, get an old toothbrush, preferably not one that you're gonna use again. Lightly coat some of the areas of that have seen corrosion and you'll see bubbling. And that means that the acids being neutralized by the, the basic qualities of the baking soda. You don't want to soak the terminal, but you do want to get a little bit on there so you know that the acid's neutralized. Then, for the parts that have the most corrosion, actually dip them in the solution. Again, the bubbles mean that the, the acid's being neutralized. You're probably going to have to dip this a couple times, hit it with a toothbrush a couple times, but basically you'll know that it's clean when it stops bubbling. Minimize any kind of splash if you can. Now you can see it's still bubbling there. Once you've chemically neutralized the acid, then make sure that the terminal is completely dry. First hit it with a good, nice dry paper towel, then let it air dry. Once you've neutralized the acid, you're gonna need to do a little bit more cleaning. A handy cleaner is one of these battery terminal cleaners. It's got a wire brush on the inside for cleaning the, uh, the, the top post, and then it's also got an inner wire brush that's great for cleaning the inside of the cable clamp. So you can see how it looks right now. Hit this guy a couple times, just like that. Metal's a little bit shinier. You know you're gonna get a good connection that way. Then do the same thing for the other terminal and the cable as well. See how nice and shiny that is? So once your terminals are clean, then it's safe to charge your battery. Uh, you don't have to remove the battery cables in order to charge the battery, but if you see any corrosion, you know that's gonna be a problem for yourself right now and possibly in the future. So if you have to charge the battery at all, always clean the terminals. And then we'll hook up the positive cable to the positive terminal. We'll get this tight, you know, just enough to get a, a good positive connection. You don't want to crank this down with 100 foot pounds or anything, because you're going to have to take this off sometime, probably. You just want it good and tight. Any tighter than that, you're probably going to hurt something. Then connect the negative terminal. There we go. Remember, whenever you're tightening down any kind of cables that are attached to an actual battery, to be mindful of all the metal that's surrounding it because you can short stuff out if you do connect the, the positive side to any other metal pieces in the engine compartment. So we check, they're nice and secure. You're ready to go. Once your terminals are cleaned off, then connect your charger cable clamps. Start with the positive to the positive. Optima recommends taking the negative clamp and attaching it to a chassis for a ground. So we're gonna attach it to the, the negative terminal. Then make your selection and allow the charger to analyze the battery. The battery looks healthy. It's showing a high voltage, uh, but it's about 25% discharge. So uh, we're gonna leave it on the charger for a couple hours and uh, come back and see how it does. 
So after cleaning up the flooded battery, charging it for a few hours, it's showing 100% and it should be able to start the truck up with no problem. Now we'll go through the procedures for recovering a deeply discharged red top AGM battery. First step is attaching the positive clamp to the positive terminal and the negative clamp to the negative terminal. Then plug the charger into the wall. Once you plug it into the wall socket, the LCD screen will light up and ask you to make a quick set selection. We're using a red top in this particular instance, so we press the red top, blue top selecting button and then the charger will analyze the battery. As you can see, the battery's at about 75% capacity, needs to go up another 25%. According to Optima's charging schedule, this should take about three to five hours to fully recharge. So and as you can see, the, the red top is 100% charged and ready to go. Uh, the great thing about this particular charger is that once that it's charged the battery completely, it then goes into a maintenance mode, which is great because that means you can leave your battery on the charger indefinitely and it's ready to go whenever you're ready to use it. Now let's pop the hood on the Mustang and take a look at the deep cycle battery that's in there. First thing that they recommend that you do is hook up the positive terminal. Using the negative clamp, make sure you attach to some place that's a metal surface that's attached to the frame. In this case, we'll put it here. Then once you've secured the, the clamps, then plug the, the charger into the wall outlet. So when we first checked the battery, it was at about 75% and we were having a bit of an issue starting. Now the battery's at 100%, so there shouldn't be any issues with starting. Let's check it out and see what happened. And that's how you properly maintain and recharge a flooded type battery, uh, an AGM starting type battery, and a deep cycle battery. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment below.